We're on the clock now with a minute to explore a handful of other notable headlines from the week. First on the agenda, early voting began in Albuquerque for an election that includes a runoff for city council, and that would be in District 7 between Republican incumbent Janice Arnold Jones and Diane Gibson. A Democrat, also in the ballot, is a special election to determine whether late-term abortions will be banned in the city. Voters can choose whether they are for or against the, quote, pain-capable unborn child protection ordinance, which includes a lengthy description on the ballot. Sophie, a federal judge in Texas, however, struck down a different bill, but one that was also about abortion <laughs> restrictions. The same, but not really. Work that was my right. You like that? that one. <laughs> so, he struck so down a not that. like the so, so what? So what is interesting about Please. the Texas uh, the Texas legislation is mm -hmm. that the Texas legislature actually passed a 20 week yeah. abortion bill similar to what's on our ballot here, mm -hmm. and the, the Texas courts did not strike down the 20-week ban, and the reason is there was not yet a lawsuit about it. Mm -hmm. If this ban is passed, a woman will have to bring a lawsuit. This is my understanding. A woman will have to bring a lawsuit saying, I am harmed by this. I am attempting to get an abortion at this time. Mm -hmm. And so someone will actually have to go through that mm -hmm. experience in order for this to be addressed. Interesting, Antoinette. And it's sad to say, because I've said yeah. all along, I don't think that this, uh, that the, that it's constitutional. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so to, to have to put someone. A real person. Yeah, in that position yep. and all of the energy um, just to get that struck down. Sure. And I think it will get struck down. Mm -hmm. It's really, it doesn't have an option uh, to preserve the health of the woman. Mm -hmm. And that alone, I think, is problematic. That's interesting. And I hold you guys there. Uh, we'll pick up on this next week. Daniel will be here. Tracy, next time, as they say. There's a new contender in the race to win the Democratic Party's nomination for governor. That would be Alan Weber, a Santa Fe businessman who co-founded, co excuse me, the magazine Fast Company, told Santa Fe New Mexican reporter Steve Terrell that he has, quote, a lot of experience in business, economic development, and issues like public education. Tracy, that sounds pretty good because the guy first Seems like he can write his own checks. He can fund his own campaign. He's got different ideas. But the attacks on him started almost immediately. Uh -huh. It was very interesting over the weekend over Twitter. Absolutely. Fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think it's partly interesting because mm -hmm. he's exactly the kind of guy um, who Republicans want to be in some ways. He's a huge personal mm -hmm. success. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He made his own his own he wrote right. his own ticket that's right um and but i i think it's 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 interesting that um we talked about this a little bit mm -hmm. um that you know why are they attacking him so hard mm -hmm. um you know if, if you believe the polling and 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 all of that um the republicans and the, and the martinez camp are in you know a, a really great position right now mm -hmm. so you have to ask well why are they reacting so hard mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. this supposedly you know very long shot sure Candidate. Absolutely. Dan, your thought on that? I mean, it, it's they're going to attack as Governor Richardson did whenever anybody poked their head out to run against him. That's what you do. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I just, I think what we see here, and I don't know the man, so, you know, I'm not going to make any personal attacks on the guy, but, I mean, he's clearly not from New Mexico. You know, I think you see a lot of politicians look around the country and say, that's a place I can afford to get elected to positions. I'm going to go there. Mm -hmm. So it'll be interesting to see if he has the ability, the wherewithal to even make it through the Democrat primary. There's been a primary. Kennedy or two that's done that. Moved across <laughs> state lines to <laughs> get political office. And there's been Republicans but that have done it too. Sure, so. absolutely. Ten years, absolutely. Ten years in advance seems like a lot of planning. <laughs> exactly right. Case. I don't know if that's I'm going to hold you guys there on that one. A three and a half hour hearing before the House Committee on Wednesday, Health and Human Services Secretary Ms. Sebelius apologized for what she called a miserably frustrating experience for too many Americans trying to access the government's health care website. And New Mexico Senator Tom Udall and Mr. Heinrich, both Democrats, have joined many Republicans in requesting that delay for the deadline for people to obtain that coverage under the law. Let me start with uh, Sophie on this one. I'll make a quick change here. All large-scale websites usually have a bit of a hiccup going yes, forward. That, I think that's true. Yeah. In, but the president's speech in Boston uh, early in the week was fascinating. Mm -hmm. They had problems in Massachusetts. Now 93% of their folks are covered, if not a, a bunch more than that. Um, but the problem of people, their insurance being dropped has has reared its head mm -hmm. as well. Touch on a few of those in the 15 seconds. Uh, okay, so, so, so the issue uh, the, the issue here is that, um, that there are a number of plans that uh, 
are, are so insufficient, unfortunately, that they cannot, in fact, comply with the minimum requirements to be considered insurance anymore. That's right. And rather than administratively handling it in-house, those insurance companies are saying, we're dropping That's you right. from your old plan. You need to pick up with a new plan. Mm -hmm. The people who are on those plans do have time to mm -hmm. pick them up, but it's a little scary when you get sure. that this letter. Isn't that working. Needs this to isn't be working, and the reason it's not working, and mm -hmm. the re you, you, you brought up Massachusetts, the big difference is Massachusetts, the subsidy went to the employer mm -hmm. on behalf of the employee. Mm -hmm. We're not doing that here, and that's creating chaos because it kept mm -hmm. people in the employer's plan, Fair which enough. made it easier. Fair enough. And to your thought on that, and uh, has the president uh, sufficiently addressed this issue? Did he it, make a case? It, I, I think that it looks like they're going to jump on it. Yeah. So I'm, I'm very optimistic. Yeah. It's just... Got to hold you there, guys. Sorry about that. A little short on time. Dan, thank you. See you next week. Tracy, always good to be here. Antoinette, good to see you. Sophie, see you next week. Got some more web extras for you on the clock. Don't miss these. Three great subjects. Thank you all for your time. As always, all of us here at New Mexico in Focus appreciate your time and your effort to stay informed and engaged. Now, catch up with us anytime on social media by searching New Mexico in Focus. And you can find archived interviews and lots of bonus material from our shows on our YouTube channel and at NewMexicoInFocus.org. Also, don't forget to tune in to New Mexico PBS 5.1 Thursday night at 7 p.m. for the Great City Schools Town Hall on Race, Language, and Culture. I'm Gene Grant. We'll see you next week in Focus.